So music is a very strange thing and how it enters a personality, you know? And I think mostly we find that at a young age, uh, music is given to you in a very subtle way. You hear the drips at a very young age, but at some time in your life, it will start flowing. The water will start flowing or the music will flow within yourself. My name is Jagdeep, uh, Jagdeep Shah, and uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Ragatip. The inspiration comes from many sources uh, of music. Uh, no doubt uh, my grandfather was an influence, but I would say more than that, my father was a bigger influence, uh, especially in the classical side, and uh, his amazing ability to connect to artists and people worldwide. We moved to uh, London in the 70s and of course one of the recollections of memory was at our house when uh, bhajan players, uh, bhajniks uh, uh, used to come over to our house uh, in numbers. It was quite amazing. Uh, of course I was like 10, 11, 12, you know, and you see your house filled with all this, uh, this soulful sound of folk music. You know, you don't realize what it is. And you'd fall asleep listening to this kind of music. But like I said, all the time, what's happening is the rhythm, the soul of that music is always going into your body. I'm Raj Mystery. Uh, I'm a dad. I'm an avid music lover. Uh, since the age of four, I've been playing all manner of percussion instruments uh, and I'm the co-founder of Ragtip. At the age of three and a half, I think, for some reason, my, my dad brought home a pair of doubla after a visit to India. And, um, and I started sort of banging away at them and, and seemed to have some sort of connection with it. Just after I graduated uh, university, I had the opportunity to go and spend some time in India with a very good friend of mine, David Acharya. Uh, we had a flat in Mumbai and uh, we were very, very lucky that we had the opportunity to train under Bandit Pavani Shankar, uh, a tremendous Indian percussionist. He plays the Pakavaj, the Dholak, Tabla uh, and so on. For me, that, that actually taught me an enormous amount about myself from a, from a personal perspective. I, I, I learned, I always thought that I might be able to be a professional musician myself and one of the things I learned when I was in India uh, was actually how many people that were there that had so much more talent uh, than I had but were being left by the wayside because the system of progress uh, wasn't allowing them the opportunities to become successful. I suppose during those early years with Raj and his ambitions always uh, were to be some kind of producer. Even I remember during Shishakunji he loved uh, being in charge, you know, which was great. You know, it meant he wanted something uh, to be more than just music. So we had the idea potentially to create uh, some sort of a platform really just to cultivate audiences, right? Give them events to attend, but also accompany that with, you know, really useful information and education on what it is that they were listening to. If you'd never been to a sitar concert before, um, or you'd never listened to, uh, you know, an artist perform guzzles before, or, or whatever it might be. And, and the physical experience was accompanied with something that was actually helpful in terms of informing you about what it was that you were experiencing, uh, wh what its historic significance was, and so on. Then, then we could create something quite, uh, quite helpful, quite unique, and something that would help to protect these art forms uh, on an ongoing basis. And that really was the, uh, the birth of Ragatip. One of the things that I liked about what Raj was telling me, that he was creating something that had equality built around it. Ragatip was a platform which Raj told me was an equal platform for women and men. This is one of the biggest problems in our music field, that men end up getting platforms because they're men and they have contacts. So one of the things that 
was decided very early with Raj was that it should be an equal platform for everybody. So Raga Chip started as a blog. Uh, it's very unusual in the UK or really anywhere in the world to find an extremely good writer who also understands very deeply Indian music. Uh, but we're very blessed. We have a guy in our team called George Howlett. He's a tremendous writer, but he's just this fanatical world music um, fan who just embraces music from all different parts of the world um, and has learned an enormous amount. He plays the sitar, he plays the santor, he plays the tabla. He gives instruction in schools on these uh, instruments, uh, which is quite extraordinary. Uh, and he writes incredibly well. So we, we asked him to write some blogs for us, which we, which we put up on our website, uh, which had some reasonably good readership. Um, but as always, the purpose was um, to use those blogs as a complement to live events that we were going to uh, put on uh, to, to bring new audiences into Indian music. Um, however, as, as, as everybody knows, in 2020, the world came to a grounding halt and all of our plans to, to, to host live events got put on hold, uh, just like it did everywhere in the world. Uh, and as a result, then, we had to change our strategy and think about what we would do instead. Hi, my name's Kevil Tanner. I am a music lover, a creative, and uh, I own a film company. I received a call from Raj saying, Ragatip's taking on this new guise, and they need to engage with more people through digital avenues, social media, YouTube, etc. What can I do to help? So we, we planned a meeting over Zoom like everyone does these days. And we sat down and we discussed how do we engage a new audience? Like what is the core philosophy of what Ragatip is trying to do? And I said to them at the time, I was like, as much as we can put on 45 minutes of our performances on YouTube, which will work, we're not diversifying the audience that we have. We, we need to do something that doesn't dilute, but makes it more accessible for new people that are getting involved in that music. And one of the ideas we had was to actually bring uh, musicians from the Western tradition together with mu musicians that represented uh, music of India. Um, here in, here in the UK and we got them together at this really quite lovely uh, venue uh, in L Street called Reevely Lodge uh, and, we, and we just spent a day, uh, it ended up being the hottest day of the year and in uh, you know 40 degree plus heat uh, the guys um, put on this uh, you know kind of tremendous performance of these songs uh, which we videoed uh, so obviously no audience was allowed there but we videoed them and then put them out on YouTube. And there was something special in the air that day. It was 35 degrees. I think it was like a pressure cooker of people that hadn't played together, that were hot, but that were empowered by the experience of being around other people after months of being locked away. A community can come together. I think that was very important for us that this was about a community coming together and, and not only giving music, but giving all walks of art a chance. Uh, and, and like I said, if you don't give people a chance, then they're never gonna grow. Three weeks after the shoot, we were, going through the edit process and validating kind of the content we'd captured captured because we all felt great in the room but we couldn't share it unless we actually create the content these videos and it transpired that because of the heat the computer that was recording the audio had corrupted the files and i kid you not myself raj and tom beach dear friend and also the musical director for ragatip for this project were sitting at my place and honestly it felt like a, a wake. Like we were distraught that something so beautiful and pure that we'd created 
would never really see the light of day because of corruption and nothing we could do to fix it. And we sat there and were like, what can, like, can we salvage anything? And we did the best we could, but there are songs that were there on that day that were recorded that will never be seen. Even though the songs are very familiar and there's many different versions of it, I really do believe that, that what we created that day is some of the most beautiful music we've created ever since we, uh, the concept of Ragatip was concepted. And so I think, um, you know, that was obviously really wonderful. And what that then translated into, you know, a few weeks later as we were getting ready to release the videos on YouTube uh, was a, a conversation with a with a, a guy here in the UK called James O'Driscoll, who has, um, you know, I mean, he used to manage Tom Jones once upon a time. He's very, very well connected in the Western music industry. Um, but he, he watched the music and despite not understanding any of the Indian stuff, uh, he felt a personal connection of some sort to it. I'm, I suppose, many things, an artist manager, an A&R in the music industry, uh, project coordinator, lots of, lots of different things in music for about 30 years or so now. A lot of the time when I look at new music, there's an agenda, and there was no agenda to this. It was people enjoying playing material that maybe they hadn't tried before, and I didn't really understand what it was, but there was, an honesty in it that was just quite challenging and quite different to watch. So he got in touch, we had a conversation, uh, and, and he really encouraged the fact that we should be looking to release an album, uh, which we hadn't concepted of at all. I mean, we hadn't thought about doing anything like that. Um, and so all of a sudden we're in October 2020, you know, only a couple of months after we've done this first film shoot, and suddenly we're in Kong Studios uh, in, in, in London. North London and uh, you know over a course of two days we record uh, an eight track album and all of those issues we had with the recordings at Reevely Lodge suddenly went away because we now have an opportunity to re-record them in a professional studio in London in North London Conk Studios um, with the best kit in the most beautiful studio space and we can put it down so we had a legacy of it. The main body of this album was recorded in two days where it's three tracks a day. Sometimes, you know, Raj is going, let's do four, let's do five. Well, how do you do this stuff? But we kind of got away with it. It was quite an incredible process. Tom Beach, an amazing, a gorgeous musician, an amazing man, gorgeous musician. And, you know, the work he did prior to this that gave everyone the notes that they could look at on a, on a screen and go, OK, I'm going to go out of this song, I'm going to go into this song, and I'm going to somehow thread that all together with personality as well. It's not like they're being robotic, they're being characters, and everyone's bringing something else to the table. The, the time frames were, were ridiculous, it was so quick. And that's kind of what made it quite special because I think everyone brought their A game to it. Everyone came in and went, okay, let's have this. Let's see where it goes. I mean, it's just amazing when you think that the, the idea was originally born in July 2020. And by the end of October, not only had we done a video shoot over the course of a day, but we'd also recorded a full album involving, you know, a huge number of, of, of musicians and, and, and singers uh, over a two day period. And the number of people that had come on board to be a part of that album 
is, is really, you know, actually when you when you think about it and, and how quickly that's happened, uh, it's quite amazing. And I think, you know, one of the reasons that that's happened is because um, the purpose of the organisation is, is quite pure, right? All we are trying to do is be uh, as open as we can be to artistic talent. We invite people in, we say, look, you know, if you think you're good enough, show us what you've got. And if we can find a place for you in what we're trying to create, then absolutely we will. When we started this Ragged Tip journey, there was Raj, Jags. Obviously, I got involved. Tom Beach, James O'Driscoll, Sarah, Connor, Priyesh, Jatin. Like, that evolution was like a snowball, is that we'd just go, oh, do you want to get involved? Of course I do. No question, they're now part of the family. And at no point has anyone dropped off this snowball effect. And if we can do the same with our audience as we have done with the creatives that are in this journey, we're definitely going to succeed. Because there is so much noise online now, I think trying to find a meaningful way in which you can cut through that noise and connect with your audience uh, or your target audience that we're, that we're trying to get to, um, I think we're finding that harder and harder and harder. Uh, and, you know, as a result, we're now having to reach out. You know, we've been a small team because our, our resources are limited. And so um, it's been a small team so far, uh, but we're having to now reach out to people that, that understand that well better than we do. So I got connected into a um, sort of a, a community of, of musicians um, and people that work in the music industry. Um, earlier this year. Initially it was sort of like a support group for, for, for musicians and it's just sort of stayed as a bit of a, a kind of a networking thing. Um, and through that I met Sarah Devan, um, who's now our marketing director effectively. You know, I'd, I'd been having these conversations with Raj and, um, you know, I'd, I'd listened to you know, lots of different pieces of music on the YouTube channel. And I think it was, it wasn't one defining moment. It was an overall, and all those moments kind of came together just exactly at the right moment. And uh, I was so impressed by, you know, the people that are involved in it, the passion behind it, you know, the ethos behind it. I mean, the aim is that as many people as possible would be able to hear this, but also benefit from what the actual community is that the history doesn't get lost, that, you know, new music is made um, and that, you know, we have this positive effect. And where that goes from here, you know, is really kind of how the community develops. The reality is we don't actually know what Ragatip is because it's an evolution. Um, it's a very young organisation um, and it continues to evolve from what we thought it was to what it is right now to whatever it's going to become. But there are some values that sit at the heart of it. I think the first one is absolutely um, inclusivity. Uh, you know, we don't say no to people. We try to involve as many people as much as we possibly can. Secondly, I think quality. Uh, we have a certain standard for the stuff that we output um, and we expect to stay true to that standard uh, with whomever we're working with. Um, and I think thirdly, there's a sort of respect and an equality. You know, we, we want to um, sort of do away with, you know, gender stereotypes or these kind of misconceptions about a certain sort of music not necessarily being pure uh, and, and the true representation of, of India or whatever. You know, for us, you know, music is simply about what connects with your heart. And if we're able to continue to create music that connects with people's hearts, um, then in the end, as far as we're concerned, we're staying true to our central value system. What I'd love to see is more, more talent come to the fore from this. It was, I think, Raj and Jax's idea of bringing people who aren't household names in to the process is a, is a good one. 
And if we can carry on doing that and people can bring something to the table and we can record it and we can output it and give them an opportunity for a wider audience to hear it, that's, that can only be good for everyone involved. Rugatip is all about opportunity. It's a platform for musicians, singers, dancers to come and showcase their talent to our audience. And we're always looking for more uh, of those artists to be a part of our journey. But at the same time, it's also a place where other creatives, uh, people that specialize in, in, in video or graphic design, uh, and, and, and really anything else that is the creative arts, um, to be a part uh, of what we're trying to create, uh, to help us to grow and move forward with our purpose. Um, so we want to welcome anybody that wants to be a part of this, uh, you know, with open arms, come and join us, help us grow and achieve our potential. The, the biggest question that I ask about Ragatip is how do we gauge success? Is success based on the number of viewers we get, the number of subscribers and engagements we get on the content that we share? Or is it based on the benefits we provide to the people that are involved, whether they're musicians, creatives, etc.? We've done countless things. We've brought in so many people. All I hope now is that those people that we've brought in that are creating and producing can find the audience that they deserve to have. I think the biggest thing my father has taught me about music is that music is there to be shared. When we talk about music, it's not just the music. It involves our spirituality, our heritage, our culture, and our language. <laughs>